Hey, welcome. We've got a treat for you today. We have Coach Justin Lozano of the Harlandale Indians, the new head coach for the Harlandale Indians. We're going to have a little chat today and get to know him a little better and what to expect for the Harlandale Indians coming up. So, you know, hello, everybody. You know, I'm Coach Lozano. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, and obviously, thank you guys for, for meeting with me today. Um, so just a little bit about myself and my family, first of all. Um, you know, I'm married to my wife, Cynthia Lozano. Um, she was an educator for 15 years. Uh, now she's in real estate here in San Antonio. Um, and then I've got three young ones. Ella, uh, she's 10 years old. Uh, Jackson, he's eight years old. And then uh, my youngest boy, Judson, is four years old. So uh, I've got some some little Indians running around. All right. and, uh, very, very excited about wearing the maroon and gold on Friday night. So. Well, Coach, you know, you come in uh, as a head coach. We were just talking right before we started recording about the 100 years of Harlandale football just passing and yes. you get to start off with the 101 going forward. Right. Uh, talk about what it means to to come into Harlandale. You're not new to the community because right. you've been here before, yes. but talk about why you wanted to, why Harlandale? Right. I mean, you know, I, just even in the interview process, I, I'd let the people, the panel know there, Harlandale football, Harlandale athletics in general in San Antonio, everybody respects Harlandale athletics. They, they respect our kids, they respect our community. And, and that's the draw. The draw is the community here. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime you have community support, you have tradition, man, that's, that's one of the keys to success because tradition never graduates. When you have the, that key component and you know that you're just rebuilding with or reloading with mm -hmm. those type of kids because they, they know what it means to be a Harlandale Indian, that right there was the draw. I knew when it came open and I had this opportunity that I wanted to jump all over it. Before we get a little bit more into that part, let's talk about the, your, your journey here, mm -hmm. right? You know, talk a little bit about some of the places that you've been and who you've worked with and, sure. and what makes Coach Lozano uh, that's going to make him successful here at Harlem. Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I've, I've been a, a few places, but, you know, I, I really, my roots came under Lee Bridges um, at Stevens High School. And, and Lee Bridges also, he, he was at San Antonio Taft, uh, took them to a state championship in 2001. And then when I became, uh, you know, a, a receiver coach for him in 2010 at Stevens High School, uh, we were also a state semifinals team. So he, when I look at my coaching uh, mentors, he's my greatest uh, coaching mentor, which, was, which was, has been a blessing. Um, so I've, I've been there, obviously, like, I, like you said, I've been in the community. I was the offensive coordinator at McCollum High School. Um, and then from there, moved on to Brandeis. And then I moved up to the Metroplex. I was the head boys track coach and offensive coordinator in Waxahachie, Texas. And so the tie that took me up there really was pretty cool is Coach Sam Harrell. Um, he was, won three state championships in, at Ennis, Texas. He was our head football coach when I was growing up in Big Lake, Texas, in West Texas. And so his son and I became really good friends as we were growing up. And so when he got a job there in Waxahachie, he called me up and asked me, hey coach, I want you to come up and, and do this with me together. And so again, I was the offensive coordinator there and, and that was a great experience because uh, being there, I got a chance to play teams like DeSoto, oh, Cedar Hill, yeah. Duncanville, the Mansfield schools, that's the district of doom. And as an offensive coordinator, we made the playoffs in that district. And so that was a draw to come here. I know that we're in a tough district. Right. For me, this is the District of Doom in our area. Yeah. And, and I accept that challenge, and I'm looking forward to that challenge moving forward. Man, Coach, I'm pumped up. I'm yeah. ready to play yeah, myself. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, so good, great. So, so in coming in with all of that, mm -hmm. what, what can uh, the district expect to yeah. see when Harlandale takes the field? Um, traditionally, Harlandale, for the longest time, and I can speak on my memory when I was here in the 90s. Traditionally, we were just a, a heavy run team mm -hmm. and passing. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Torres, most recently, uh, he brought in a, a, a very fast paced passing offensive sure. attack. So yeah. what, 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 what should we expect here? So, you know, I think first and foremost, the most important thing offensively is, is building an off, not just taking what I believe is, is what I like to do, mm -hmm. but it's about the kids. It's what the kids do best. It, you know, I, I don't like to say I like to do just one thing. Again, when I was at Stevens High School, we passed the ball around all, of the, all over the place. We, we finished with 3,200 yards passing one year. We go into McCollum, we have a different style of kid. That offense didn't meet exactly what, that, what those kids met. So we changed our offense and we made it 
build around our kids there. Here, what I anticipate and what I see is a lot like we did at Johnson. I'm just I'm most recently coming from mm -hmm. Johnson High School and one of the best offenses in, in San Antonio this past year. Um, and we build it around our kids. So what you're going to see from, from our offense is you're going to see an offense that is primarily a run heavy offense because I feel like running the ball first and creating that you now own the game based off of you know time of possession right um, and so now you can put your defense in better positions when you can control the clock then off of off of that heavy run game and I'm still spread it's a power spread when you when you look at our offense I want you to think of Art Bryles Baylor that type of offense that is a run heavy, but yet they take vertical shots down the field based off of a lot of run action. Um, and then they mix things up with playing with tempo. And I know that our kids like playing with tempo because that's what they've done. Right, yeah, so. and it's always exciting when it's mixed up. But sure. again, it's important to, to put a plan together, in my opinion, that works with what, what, you, have what you have, right? Mm -hmm. no, no sense in putting something out there and they can they, they can, can do it. achieve that. So right. what about defensively? What are some of your defensive philosophies? Sure. So defensive philosophy, number one, I just I want relentless effort. Relentless effort is going to be something that we preach day in and day out with our kids on defense, because the main thing I want to see is I want them playing fast. I want them having fun and I want them getting after offenses. I want them to, you know, make offenses confused. We were pro we were going to be a, a defense, a odd front to start with, mm -hmm. and but we're going to be able to get in and out of different fronts to confuse the defense. And then, you know, the next thing is we're going to be the type of defense that creates turnovers. As to, to tour the school and the facilities, yeah. uh, what are your first impressions and but what's the conversations been like with the kids? So in terms of our facilities, uh, the facilities are great. Um, we have, you know, this whole big weight room. We have a mat room here where right now I love the what they've been doing is utilizing the entire space and so i feel like we've been getting a lot a lot of things out of our kids right now because the the facility that we have doesn't restrict us so much um and so in here it's been great um in terms of the message i've been giving them so far we're, we're going to be a program that's built off of three core values our three core values are effort discipline and class so as as you kind of hear things buzz around the community from our kids i tell our kids this each and every day I want you to go home and let your parents know that we're, we've got a mentality of effort. Nobody's going to outplay us. Effort is everything. When you have mistakes, effort's going to make up for those mistakes. When you have discipline, when you do exactly what your, coach, your coaches tell you to do and you don't let key mistakes hurt you, that's what we're looking for in our players is discipline. And then class. Again, with class, I know, I think you know being a Harlandale guy yourself, the community, our, our, our tias, our tios, our, our grandparents, our moms and dads, they want to see their kids ultimately, besides wins and losses, they want to see them act right, right on and off the field. And so class in itself, that's the main thing is that when we walk off that field, whether we won or lost, they're going to be respected because of the way we carried ourselves on the field. And coach, as you're, as you're telling me that, I am, I am thinking about those times when Coach Villafranco was holding the camera for yes. us right now, mm -hmm. was delivering that same message to us mm -hmm. when we were in high school. So uh, I, I appreciate that message as, sure. just as, as much, I'm sure, as the kids do. Mm -hmm. um, but w when it comes down to it, coming up, the season's going to start, be here before we know it, I'm sure. Right. Um, but talk about the, the district that, that you're going to be in and mm -hmm. a little bit about those teams and, sure. and uh, what to expect. I mean, we, we know, obviously, there's – a lot of great teams in the district. Uh, Bernie's going to be really tough. Uh, and not that if I don't say their names and not that I'm discluding them at all. Uh, it's just, you know, I know Bernie's going to be tough. I know Kerrville, Tybee, and obviously Alamo Heights. Those schools are going to be tough. But again, going back to what I said previously, Duncanville, DeSoto, Cedar Hill, those teams were, well, they were tough for us oh, as yeah. well. So I'm used to that. I'm used to going in on a weekend, getting and preparing our kids schematically to take advantage of whatever weakness those teams have because they're going to have weaknesses. I think, you know, I watched Alamo Heights last night. We had some opportunities in that game last year mm -hmm. um, against Alamo Heights. So oh, yeah. uh, we're not going to back down. And then I, again, I'm not the type of guy that's going to go down and I'm not trying to talk bad about those other schools. But again, right. on our end, I have confidence in myself as our staff and our kids that we're going to go out, we're going to compete hard. And, and, and at the end, the end of the day, that's what I want. I want our kids out there competing. Going into our three core values and, and then the Linsa mentality, 
I felt like that just meshes so well together because that's exactly what our community wants. And so I want our community to know, yes, I'm bringing in EDC and that is our three core values going mm -hmm. forward. But the traditions that have already been in place, like Linsa, that, that is still gonna be in place. And I'm looking forward to just building that and making it even stronger than it's ever been. Um, so. Well, great coach. And we really appreciate the time that you've taken, yes. uh, allowed us in uh, to speak with you and get to know you. And we look forward to, to having a, a long relationship yes. here. Uh, yes. So on behalf of Coach Villafranca, of myself, thank yeah. you so much. No, I want to thank you guys so much because I know how much y'all do for our community. Uh, I'm always here for our community, number one. Um, so I look forward to being at Harlandale Indian for a very long time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys.